Tech Cunningham, founder of Arclight Dynamics here. In this video, we're going to be covering the basic operation of your engraver. If you need to assemble or install your engraver, please refer to your manual for those instructions. So first off, we're going to talk about how do you program for your engraver. So we're going to open up SheCam. And what I want you to do is go over to File. We're going to say Open Job. And go to the desktop. And I'm going to look at my uh, job files right here under this folder. So now you can follow along on this video with any file you want, as long as it has an outside outline and an interior line. That's the key. So for that, I'm simply going to use this Control Pivot tab. And right now I have this job loaded up and I have an operation. I don't need this operation initially, so I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to delete it right up here under Delete Operations. So right now I have my tab here. There's an exterior cut and an interior cut. So currently they're all on one layer. So if you look over here in your Layers tab, you will see default is the name of the layer. Okay. So in order for me to program this as an engraving, the hole as an engraving, and the perimeter as a plasma cut, they need to be on separate layers. So the way you do that is you go under the Edit Contours option. It's right up here. Now I can come in here and hold down control and I can select the hole. With the hole selected, I can right click and I can say move to layer. So I'm going to create a new layer. You can call it whatever you want, hole, engrave. Now I have default and engrave here. And you can see that it turned that line to red instead of yellow. So now it looks at that circle as a separate entity. It's no longer the interior cut of the tab. So what we need to do is set up a operation to do the engraving first, and then we will create an operation to do the perimeter cut. So you first go down to create a new jet cutting operation, or you can go under operation up here. So we're going to go, first thing is we want to pick what the offset is. Normally, you're going to leave this set on outside offset. So we'll cut on the outside of the exterior lines and the inside of your interior line. For the engraving, we want no offset because I want to engrave right on top of that line. Okay. Next, we're going to select our layer, the engrave layer. Next, we're going to select our tool. Now, for this, you're going to go all the way down to the bottom of your tools, and you will say plate marker. Okay. So, just for now, generally your plate marker tool is pretty well set. The real thing that you're going to be changing will have to do with the speed. You can double click on these little icon, this icon here and open up the tool. Okay, you can see it's a plate marker tool. Um, you can see there's the feed rate and then your start delay. Okay, so the biggest thing you want to maintain the two things that you may adjust in this tool as you become more experienced with your engraver is your feed rate how fast the engraver moves that will determine what type of line it produces it will produce different types of lines and different types of materials you're really just going to have to experiment with this if you really want to dial it in and then the other thing is your start delay so half second is generally a good start delay. And if your 
pressure on your slide is set up correctly, that should be a plenty of a delay for the engraver to go down, hit the material prior to the machine starting motion. Now, if you run into a situation where you are seeing large divots at the starts of your engravings, that may mean that you are sitting there for too long. You really want that engraver to hit and then start moving right away. The longer it sits there, the more of a divot it will make and the more obvious that divot will be. But generally, in most circumstances, you don't have to mess with this, these tool parameters too much. We're not going to. Okay, so I'm just going to click OK, close out of that. So I have my tool selected. It's set my feed rate. Um, I'm going to turn off my path rules because generally the path rules will slow things down. Okay, and then I'm also going to have no lead ins and no lead outs. Now, important to remember here anytime you make changes to your lead ins or say your path rules. The next time you go to program a file, SheCam is going to remember that. And so it, next time I come in and I just want to do a simple plasma cut, I'm going to have to make sure that my lead-ins are selected correctly. And if I have, want path rules, that they're selected correctly. Okay, So that's something really important to remember. Okay, So no offset, plate marker is my tool, and it, basically I've stopped my lead-ins. Now I'm going to click OK. So you can see I've generated an operation over here. The machine will go over straight to the line and do the engraving. Now I'm going to create an operation for the plasma cut. Okay, I'm going to create another operation. This time it's going to be an outside offset. This is the exterior. And I'm going to select the default layer. This time I'm going to select my proper tool, which for me is going to be 65 amp quarter inch steel in this situation. Um, I'm going to now, as you can see, my path rules are set to none. If I want to use my rules, I'll click it back to standard rules and I'll turn on a lead in. I'm going to want to lead in on this exterior cut. I don't necessarily need a lead out, but if I wanted to, I just select arc and it would do a lead out. So now with those parameters set, I click OK. Now that generates my cut for my um, the exterior of the part. So now with both of these operations checked over here, when I post process, the engraver will, the machine will go offset, do the engraving, and then it will come over and do the plasma cut. So what I'm going to do here is go file, run post processor. I'm simply going to save it to my desktop. I'm going to call it engraver test. I click save. It completed the post processing, didn't give me any errors. Click OK. So now we're ready to move on to Command CNC and actually use the engraver and cut this out. So now I have a Command CNC pulled up and I've loaded up my file. The first thing you'll notice is it looks quite a bit different than what you might expect. What you're seeing here is the offset between the engraver and the plasma um, torch. Basically this, so what's going to happen is the machine is going to go over, touch off where it wants to do the cut, and then it will offset to the left, fire the engraving, do the engraver, and then go back, touch off for the plasma, and do the cut. So that's the reason it looks like this. This is showing how far the engraver is offset in the negative direction this way and this way. Okay, 
So, the first things you want to be very aware of anytime you're using your engraver is one, you want to have your air pressure set properly. In order to set your air pressure, you actually have to fire the engraver. So, bring your torch up into the air so it's high above your material so you have plenty of room for your engraver to drop down. Turn on your engraver and that will apply air pressure to the um, to the regulators on the front of your um, engraver plate, whether it's on the front of your table or on the side of your table. So as you can see in this picture, so if I deploy my engraver, it activates, it will supply air pressure to those. And that's how you can get air pressure to set them. You really, it, it, it's written on the sticker on the front of the engraver, but you want to see, see about 15 to 20 PSI maximum in your slide pressure. And then you also want to see um, 90 PSI in your engraver pressure. That's what I recommend. So secondly, you also have to make sure that you have oil in your, uh, your, your oiler, which is located on um, the right side of your z-axis. Um, that oiler should, while the engraver is running, it should be dripping about one drip or so a minute, maybe two drips a minute. Doesn't take a lot, but if this is the first time you've used your engraver and you have not used it in a very long time, you may want to dry fire this engraver to make sure it activates, that it turns on and starts buzzing um, when you deploy it. If you find that it doesn't, you may want to uh, remove the air hose and put a few drops of uh, air tour oil down in there just to kind of loosen it up, put the air line back in, engage it, maybe kind of tap it on a piece of steel. It'll free up that mechanism and get it moving for you. So it's really important that you have some kind of lubrication in this uh, air engraver tool. So now, let me pull up my camera so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to simply drop down on this piece of quarter inch plate and zero out where I want to do my cut. I've already homed my table. As always, very important. So I'm going to zero out here. Zero my X and my Y and my Z because Z is close enough. Okay. Um, I want to make sure, okay, so if you were doing this on a piece of light gauge material, thin material, any kind of um, like a scrap, I have a pretty decent sized piece of quarter inch on the plate table right now. So I don't necessarily have to hold this plate down because it's got enough weight, but the engraver really does apply a lot of vibrational kind of force to the plate and it will make even bigger sheets of material move um, if given the opportunity. So having a way to hold down uh, thinner sheets of plate is very important. So, I mean, often on small engravings, individual engravings, I just hold it down or you can get some heavy plate, hold it down, but you'd be surprised at how easily the engraver will move a heavy piece of plate. So. But in this case, it's a pretty decent sized sheet of quarter inch, I don't have to worry about it. So basically, I've zeroed out, and I'm going to hit the run table, or run button. And what's going to happen is the machine's going to go over, touch off where it wants to engrave the hole. It will offset to the left, fire the engraver, do our engraving, and then it will ask me to uh, hit the run button again in order to do the plasma. Now I have an option. Um, I can go under manual here and I can uncheck stop at M1 and that will prevent it from stopping and uh, asking me to hit run again and it will simply do the engraving and then the cut. So that's an option for you but for right now I'm just going to leave it stock the way it is. Okay. So 
We're going to hit run. Well, first off, do your checklist. Plasma set up. You know, I, it's set to the right amperage. I have arc sync, so I know it's going to set to the right amperage. Nothing's in the way of the material. Uh, nothing's in the way of the torch offsetting for the engraver. Um, nothing is going to get in the way. I got enough material to cut this part. It's the right material. I got the right consumables in. My air pressure's on. I know all that's good. So, with that done, I'm simply going to hit the run button and uh, we're going to do the engraving. Touch is off, offset, engrave. Ask me, I hit resume, offsets again, does the plasma. So it's finished my cut. Let me get this out. Show it to you. So basically, there's my engraving. Did my hole, put it in the right spot, cut my part. So that's the basics on how to run your engraver. Thanks for watching and I hope that video was helpful. Please remember our primary goal is to make your purchase profitable. So don't hesitate to reach out for help. You can reach us at 866-222-2154 or head over to our website where you'll find a complete list of all of our training materials. Thank you.